So recently, we have seen a huge wave of vertical farming startups going bankrupt with hundreds of millions of dollars in investor money being flushed down the toilet. While this is naturally a sad thing for the entrepreneurs and their investors, and especially for the employees who have just lost their jobs in a lucrative new field, I would argue that these bankruptcies are actually a great thing for the vertical farming industry overall. So let me explain. Okay, so unless you have been living under a rock, you've most likely heard that the last two to three years have not been easy for the vertical farming industry, with many previously promising vertical farms like Aero Farms, Calera, Fifth Season, Future Crops and Upwards Farms declaring for bankruptcies. In addition, many other very well-financed vertical farming companies like Infarms and Iron Ox have announced that they will be significantly scaling back their operations, pulling back from key markets and basically firing huge portions of their global staff. So why is this happening? Why are vertical farming startups going bankrupt? Well, most of these failures can be attributed to things like overly large capital investments and unrealistic payback periods, bad business models and non-existing unit economics. And all of this is added with investor FOMO and just overall hubris, meaning that too many vertical farming startups thought that they could scale a food production business like its software as a service. Well, it's not. And of course, let's not forget the sudden rise in resource costs and consumer prices have made the situation even worse, pushing even more companies near the brink. Okay, so a ton of vertical farming companies have gone bankrupt and surely more are to follow in the near future. So you might ask, what makes this a good thing? Why is it good that vertical farming companies are going bankrupt? Well, first, one of the biggest issues with vertical farming has always been an excessive amount of hype, partly based on unbacked claims, including that vertical farming will save all of the world's food production issues in one fell swoop. While vertical farming definitely has a role to play in the future of food production, the technology is still in its infancy and it does have some serious limitations to what it can grow, where and for what kind of a price. In fact, the whole industry has become a victim of never-ending white and greenwashing and companies have been making outrageous claims about their technologies and capabilities with zero transparency in their calculations or reporting standards. So with all of this taken into account, seeing some of the largest and also most well-financed vertical farming companies filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy will hopefully calm some of the hype down and I think this will be super healthy for the industry moving forward. In addition to lowering the market expectations to a more realistic level, the recent bankruptcies will also have several other benefits that will help the surviving startups grow their businesses even further. First, one of the major challenges that many vertical farming startups have been facing when growing has been that not that many people, even around the globe, have had actual hands-on experience with the technology or with indoor vertical cultivation. However, as the vertical farming market started growing and more and more companies entered the industry, more people also started accumulating valuable experience working with these kinds of systems hands on. And while of course it is sad that many of these people have now lost their jobs, after all it's not their fault, this does give the surviving companies in the field a unique opportunity to hire ex-employees from their now bankrupt competitors. And while most vertical farming startups were previously forced to hire people mostly based on their education and other type of experience, basically based on their potential for learning and growth, now companies like ours are actually offered a great opportunity to hire people with actual experience, not only running vertical farms, but also having seen the issues and mistakes made by the other companies that are no longer there. So this will allow the surviving companies to learn from the others' mistakes while building a more experienced workforce that does not need to be onboarded to every single basic aspect of vertical farming at the start of their employment. And talking of which, the second way startups are able to benefit from their competitors' bankruptcies is by learning from the mistakes that led to the issues in the first place. In fact, competitors' bankruptcies are some of the best ways to learn how not to do things, and this is actually one of the reasons why it's not always good to be first 
to a new market. Of course, while being a first mover does have its advantages, and if successful, early innovators can build significant moats to protect themselves from competition, it is however more common that those first to the market get to make every single mistake possible, paying huge sums of money trying to navigate the new market, trying to also find the correct way of doing things. Thus, following the first movers closely and analyzing their downfall over time can actually reveal a ton of valuable information that can save you from running into the same issues in the future. And naturally, poaching the competitors' ex-employees will also help with this, as it will give you a real inside look into the competitors' operations, instead of you having to guess what has been happening below the surface. Anyways, the third way surviving vertical farming companies can benefit from the recent bankruptcies is by acquiring their competitors' assets with massive discounts. So because most vertical farming companies have been heavily focusing on developing their technology, often to the detriment of their business, many of the failing startups have a ton of valuable assets in their books, for example in the forms of intellectual property, hardware, software, as well as extensive data sets, all of which can be useful for their competitors. So in normal circumstances, acquiring these kind of intellectual property from other companies can be super expensive, and for example, early patents can give even the smaller players huge amounts of leverage over their competitors. And when startups like these get into financial trouble and go bankrupt, acquiring their innovations can become significantly cheaper as these failing companies are basically forced to sell their assets at a discount to pay whatever they can to their debtors and existing shareholders. So this will naturally allow other, better positioned companies to accumulate valuable IP into their own portfolios, increasing their valuation and prospects even further. So having said this, our team was actually able to do just that by acquiring the assets of one of the largest vertical farming companies in all of Finland after it declared for bankruptcy earlier this year. So even while we have a wildly different product portfolio and focus, the amount of technological information, business secrets and other assets that we were able to acquire was pretty incredible and all for pennies on the dollar. So this is what a bankrupt vertical farming company looks like. A couple of months ago, we still had a really cool automated vertical farm working in this space here in the Helsinki capital region. And um, while this is of course a kind of a somber occasion, it is also re representing a massive opportunity because with the amount of bankruptcies and uh, companies going under that we have seen, there is a huge amount of people with practical skills in this market being released so to say, back into the talent pool. And uh, of course, this technology that these companies have developed, acquiring the technology, the skill sets, the IP, is of course adding value to the ones that we are building ourselves. So while these kind of bankruptcies are always very difficult to see, uh, look at and, and you know experience, we have to remember that is, it is a part of the natural business cycle, especially with new and growing technology sectors where most companies never make it in the long term. And uh, for us, this represents an incredible opportunity when moving forward. So in addition to acquiring the competitors' assets and employees, another way that surviving companies can benefit from the recent vertical farming bankruptcies is by closing the competitors' best clients and offer your services as a replacement. So all of you who have done any kind of business ever, you know that customer acquisition is one of the most important parts of any new business and closing new or cold customers in a new product category, especially like vertical farming, takes a huge amount of time, effort and money to do well. In fact, most potential customers for vertical farming companies probably don't even know what vertical farming is, what kind of benefit it can offer and what kind of risks are involved. Thus, in reality, it's much easier to sell vertical farming as a concept to a customer that has already utilized the technology through your competitors and who knows what they are getting themselves into. So once your competitors go belly up, you should immediately swoop in not only to acquire any valuable assets that they still hold, but to also offer yourself as a replacement for your competitors' existing customers. Talking of customer acquisition, if you're interested in learning how to use vertical farming, for example, in the hotel and restaurant industry, make sure to check out this video next.